Scientists have devised incredible tools to make neural activity visible, including an engineered protein that, when placed inside of a neuron, shines with a fluorescent brilliance when that neuron fires. This method takes advantage of the natural ability of some jellyfish to be fluorescent. So how does jellyfish fluorescence work? Basically, when you shine blue light on the jellyfish, proteins in their body absorb the blue and emit back green light. And scientists took the gene encoding this protein, which is called green fluorescent protein, or GFP, and combined it with another protein called calmodulin, or CAM, that binds to calcium ions. And when fused together, this hybrid protein converts between a low fluorescent state when there's not much calcium around, and a high fluorescent state when the calmodulin binds to calcium ions. And this fused protein is called GFP calmodulin probe, or GCAM. So calcium is an incredibly important element, especially for neurons. When neurons fire, calcium ions flow inside the cell and help transmit the signal further. So if that firing neuron contains G-camp, then the calcium ions that go into the cell will bind to the G-camp and temporarily convert it to the bright green fluorescent state. Then when the neuron settles back down again and pumps the calcium ions back out, the G-camp will convert into, back into the low fluorescent state. So if you watch this neuron with the right kind of microscope, you'll be able to see a flash of green light when the neuron activates. And this makes neural activity visible and is incredibly helpful for studying how neurons and brains work. And by the way, calcium comes from the Latin word calx, meaning limestone, which contains calcium. And calx was borrowed into Old English as kilk, where it came to mean the particular kind of limestone that's white and soft and known today as chalk. So getting back to locusts, researchers in Germany, led by Xingzong Jiang, devised a plan to make locusts produce G-camp in their smell centers. And to do that, they used CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing to insert a custom DNA strand that encodes the G-camp protein into the locust genome. They placed this gene next to a naturally occurring gene that's expressed in the locust's smell neurons. And so as a result, these locusts now naturally produce G-camp in their smell neurons and researchers can record neural activity from these neurons as the locusts smell things. So insects smell neurons are found in the antennae, but they send their axons into the antennal lobe brain center, which is where smell information is processed. So in these locusts with G-camp, the antennal lobe is now green with G-camp, which you can see in the axons of these smell neurons. And microscope images of their brains show these little green balls, which are olfactory glomeruli, which are synaptic centers in this lobe, which are processing different types of odors. So glomeruli are really these processing centers for odor information, and they're found both in mammals as well as in insects. So the first big question is, what kinds of odors does each glomerulus respond to? For the locust, that's really a big mystery because their brains have 20 times more glomeruli than you would expect based on genomic analyses. They have thousands of glomeruli. So the researchers took a locust and stimulated it with different odors. Each different odor activated a different set of glomeruli, as expected. But most odors activated dozens of glomeruli. And since there are literally thousands, the relationship between odors and glomeruli is really complicated and not easy to parse out. But there is a pattern there. It actually looks like the locust antenna lobe is organized into concentric rings, functionally speaking where glomeruli that are at the same distance from the center of the lobe tend to respond to the same odors. So it's a little like an onion, where each layer of this brain center tends to respond to particular types of smells. If you look in other animals, like flies or mice, their olfactory glomeruli that happen to be nearby one another tend to respond similarly and form little clusters or regions that are tuned to particular types of odors, but no one has ever seen this concentric ring organizational pattern before. It's really new and unexpected pattern. So more specifically, glomeruli near the periphery of the lobe are more likely to respond to odors that come from the locust's body, including pheromones. And these are the types of smells that contain social information, like who's nearby me? Are they the same species? What sex are they? Are they in the solitary or gregarious phase? 
And as you peel off layers of this onion and get closer to the center, you find glomeruli that tend to respond to odors from plants, like maize or wheat. And these odors tell the locust what's in the local environment and help it find the right food sources. So this is a really kind of basic general trend, and we're still a really long way from understanding what each and every glomerulus does, but there is definitely an intriguing pattern here. So what does it all mean? Well, it means that locusts have evolved a very unique olfactory system. They have way more glomeruli than anyone expected, and the glomeruli they have follow a rule where their distance from the center of the lobe seems to determine what they respond to, so it is a unique type of organization. And this system seems weirder and more complex than other animals, many of whom can get by with a hundred times fewer glomeruli. So which system is better? That's hard to say. Locusts are really successful and really important because of their ability to form crop-destroying swarms, but there's only about 20 species of locust. And in contrast, there are 12,000 species of grasshoppers, which are the larger family of insects that locusts are members of. But closely related grasshoppers might turn out to share some of these weird brain traits that we see in the locust. Most species on Earth have never been studied in any level of detail. So who knows what other kinds of strange and bizarre brains are out there? <laughs>